it is a testament to, I think, of the, the just like the quality of people that, you know, have been I've been exposed to in my career and then being able to talk to them and just hear one, it might just be about their background. It might be about a sortie where they got a distinguished flying cross. I mean, I've had, you know, Vietnam Marines who are fighter pilots and then they're chucking grenades down hallways and stuff when the, you know, the fobs overrun. I mean, it's, it's wild. I got one that I'm pretty excited about. I am trying to get it out on July 4th, but he was the air mission commander for the last C-17 evacuation out of uh, Kabul, which is something that's pretty interesting from an Air Force standpoint, because we're always talking about kicking the door down and going to fight our way in and escort people to wherever they need to go. But we, and we exercise that all the time with red flags and also, I mean, large force exercises all the time, but we never do the, hey, it's time to leave this spot. How do we egress this location in mass? And so it, it was a really, you know, I think we talked about it when I was on the episode the first time around. Um, obviously, leaving Afghanistan, the way that went was very emotional for a lot of people. Yeah, but and that was finding, a little bit fresher when we, when we spoke about it. Yeah, but you, now you see it, and I was like two years out. And then listen to Alex talk about, you know, seeing the Taliban inside the wire waving as the last C-17 took off. Just kind of, I don't know, it has, it has a different impact, so. Yeah, it's been it's been a fun journey to say the least. Yeah, definitely. But that that is crazy to hear about because I think everybody who, who was a veteran of those wars and many of the guys we've had on did, of course, have an understandably emotional response to how things were handled. And in many cases, people would say many cases, people would say how it was botched the whole the yeah. whole getting out of there and and left a lot of people thinking, why are we there in the first place? What did we accomplish? Did we leave Afghanistan better than when we came in? So. Yeah, it's and you know, hearing Alex talk because I mean, I've definitely thrown a lot of shade in the direction of, well, hey, you know, we fell back to Kabul, right? And, and if anyone's been to Kabul, it's just a hodgepodge. It's it's not a secure. I mean, it's a hodgepodge of compounds, unlike Bagram and Kandahar, which like you think your traditional base with a wire and a fence. And we gave up our most strategic locations. But, you know, he talked about why that decision was made and how it went down that path, et cetera. So you're like, okay, you know, I can, I can see both sides of it. But nonetheless, the, how, we, how we left it and just kind of like, poof, here's a bunch of stuff and we're out. Um, yeah, it seemed like there could have been a, a few better options. But it gets political, right? You know, hey, we're leaving Afghanistan and this is the line in the sand versus, you know, we kicked the hornet's nest, in my humble opinion. We, yeah probably needed unfortunately we're going to, have to hang out there for the eternity with a small footprint just making sure bad people don't do too many bad things it's wild too because i i've played it before on the podcast and i don't, I don't really have the ability to play it here maybe uh, our video editor harold can pull it up but there's a speech that joe biden gave like many years prior to with the withdrawal of afghanistan i don't know if you saw it i mean we're talking like a long time before and He's saying that if we were to just leave on a certain date. End the war today, begin to withdraw all American troops. It will take a year to get the American troops out. It will take a year to get them physically out. The, the weapons that we have over there would go in the wrong hands and they would be used against us. Now, if you leave all the equipment behind, you might be able to do it in seven months and you leave those billions of dollars of weapons behind i promise they're going to be used against your grandchild and mine someday all the things that we have seen gone wrong he warned against so it's it's really just strange to see all these years later that there was the exact same strategy that was used and you know it does get into politics of course and, and we right. don't really get into all that but i mean it is just wild to see that he kind of warned against what he ended up doing yeah and that's you know i think that's an unfortunate piece is I mean, obviously it is politicized and it's a very political decision. It's a very costly war, obviously with lives and, and just financial. But yeah, you, know, you look at the stuff we do in other places in the world with, I think, a relatively small footprint with special operations forces that, you know, you could support and have a relatively small footprint, but be able to maintain and control. The funny story, I was flying with a guy in my my airline career, right? He's, he's a retired Marine colonel and he was he was tasked with figuring out how to get all the MRAPs out of Afghanistan. They looked at it, you know, I mean, they spend, 
I don't know, weeks, months doing all the analysis of how, how are they going to get all the Marine Corps MRAPs out of Afghanistan? They quickly figured out that it would cost the entire Marine Corps budget for a fiscal year to get all the vehicles out of there. So what did they do? They went down the road to the army and said, Hey, do you guys want these MRAPs? And you know, before the army could figure it out, Hey, the MRAPs are yours. Like that's the, you know, the shell game that's being played. And then, uh, you know, everything got left and God knows how much, how much stuff that ended up in the Taliban, but you know, is Iraq 2000, you know, 10, 11 ish time period leaving there. And then, you know, fast forward to my time with operation inherent resolve, dropping bombs on MRAPs, dropping bombs on excavators, Humvees, all stuff that, we had given to the Iraqi army and rightfully so, you know, we, we equipped the Iraqi army to hopefully stand on their own. And then it just didn't pan out that way. 